Welcome to Crush It With Email. In this session, what we're going to be coaching to are some strategies and techniques, very specific techniques that you'll be able to drop into your business regardless to what you sell to make it very easy for prospects and customers to connect or reconnect in a way that makes sense. Now, when we think about e email marketing, you know, a couple of things come to mind. One of the reasons why it's so darn popular is that it's very inexpensive. Email, it's an easy way to reach customers. It's an easy way to, to reach out to prospects. And, you know, uh, let's be honest, it's also a no-risk way. There's absolutely no rejection. <laughs> we can send out an email to a couple of thousand people, and if nobody's interested, we don't have to go through the pain of rejection. Not only that, email is fast. We can blast out a message to a thousand people just like that. And these are the exact reasons why email doesn't work for most people in sales. See, we all get bombarded with, with tons and tons of messages every single day. And over the years of working with individuals in sales, either one-on-one -on -one, in a group setting or even company-wide, there's been a couple of things that I've noticed that I want to share with you, some stumbling blocks that make it difficult, believe it or not, things that you and I are doing that make it difficult for the people that we want to talk to to take that next logical step. So I can't wait to, to dive in and, and, and give you some, some real specific strategies and techniques. But if it's okay, I'd like to start with what are some of those stumbling blocks? The first one that I've seen is what I call selling by email. Now, this shows up all over the place. And the, the fact is, is that we just can't sell by email. Take a look at, at maybe some of the proposal follow-up emails that you've sent out. Maybe you followed up on a bid or a quote. Or, you know, e emails that you send out to somebody that you think might be interested. And what we often find is, is that we've jam-packed these messages with all the reasons why we think they should buy. The purpose of an email, it's not to make a sale, right? It's to communicate a, a piece of information that'll spark a conversation. For most of us, what we sell isn't a commodity, right? They, they, they can't just go online and buy it. They actually have to speak with somebody. It would be wonderful if all you had to do every day is come in, turn on your computer, and the money started rolling in. <laughs> but that's not really sales, is it? That's order taking. And for you and I, in order to get something sold, we have to have a conversation. And if we break that down and we look at some of the email messages that we send out, we're not trying to get them to take what we're going to be talking about here is a next logical step. That's a phrase that we're going to hear again and again and again. Take that next logical step. And instead, if we were to go back and review some of our emails, what we're actually trying to do is sell a product, justify our price. And it just doesn't work. All right, so that's stumbling block number one. The second stumbling block that, that I've seen, again, in years of working with salespeople, is that we send emails out and we have unrealistic expectations. That, that, that can show up in a whole bunch of different ways, but here's a few examples. Unrealistic expectations, that they can sound like this. When you're ready to buy, call me. Now, I've had uh, companies and individuals send me emails saying, Bob, can, can you take a look at this? Can you maybe give me some critique? And there's always a, a similar theme running throughout every single one. One, those emails, they're trying to sell. They've got this huge presentation in there justifying their price, telling them all the reasons that they should buy. And they always have this same single call to action. When you're ready to buy, call me. Now, sometimes that could look like hit reply if you have any questions. What do we know? Think about how many emails you get on a daily basis. When's the last time that you received a, a, a sales email from somebody that included a phone number and you're like, oh, wow, let me stop what I'm doing, pick up the phone <laughs> and call. It just doesn't happen. So the unrealistic expectations are when you're ready to buy, call me. Here's another one. It's not unusual to see someone type paragraph after paragraph after paragraph in an email. And we're trying to accomplish way too much way too fast. It could look like this. We're trying to introduce our company. 
We're trying to explain about a product or service. At the same time, we're also trying to get them to, to take a next step, pick up the phone and call me. And they have to go through and make some, make a whole bunch of decisions in this very short message. Do I know this person? Do I trust this person? Is what they have even what I need? And is this worth looking into right now? And what I'm going to suggest is, and as we go through this, this course, crush it with email, is that we break our, our messages down to a next logical step. So the first stumbling block is when we try to sell by email. The second one is unrealistic expectations. They're not going to pick up the phone and call us. They're not going to hit reply with questions. Well, they, sometimes they do. But usually the question is, can you take me off your list? <laughs> and they're not going to read pages and pages and pages of emails. 